Hello guys, this is Good Lake, and in today's video, I want to talk about the process that I will be using while developing the Subbox application. As you can see, we will be doing an agile something. Spoilers below. Why agile? I think that it really suits my particular needs. I'm a small development team of one person. I'm not actually that sure what I want to do. I have plans in video 5, but they're basically one line of plans. It could go any way, really. I'll talk about why I have a process in the first place. Why not just go right in hacking? That will be in the rambling part of the video. Much later. For now, let's just agree that I do need a process, and out of all the options that I'm aware of, Agile simply seems the way better one. Now, Agile itself isn't really a process. It's more of a set of principles. A process usually is a lot more prescriptive. It tells you exactly what to do. Though usually a process will leave some wiggle room. So when picking a process, I decided on taking Scrum, one of the most popular processes, and uh, tuning it for myself and see what comes out the other end. The development that I'm going to be doing is obviously not going to be your everyday development, because I'm doing it by myself and whenever I feel like it. Certainly not a job. So it would be incredibly stupid to just take any process that's tuned for those specific parameters and just use it without any adjustment or Let's be fair, without drastic adjustments. Processes are tools. They're intended to solve very specific problems. Scrum is no different. So I have Scrum website open here. And I don't know it by heart, so we're going to have to actually go through step by step all the various uh, features of the process. Yeah, we can ignore all this initial part because it just... It's all your silly management and uh, marketing bullshit. Uh, scrum value, whatever. Moving on. Here it is. The scrum events, right? So any person who's ever done scrum or anything that's called scrum, even if it isn't, knows of these events. The sprint, the sprint planning, the daily scrum, the sprint review, and sprint retrospective. There's also scrum artifacts, which would be product backlog, sprint backlog, and increment. Let me see if my knowledge is actually not as bad as I think, and I can probably roughly explain what they are. So a sprint is a time frame in which your team works to achieve some kind of a goal. Sprint is uh, an iterative activity. You keep doing sprint, and another sprint, and another sprint, and another sprint. At the end of every sprint, you have something accomplished. Hopefully. Sprint planning is the event at the start of a sprint, where you decide what you're going to do during the next sprint. Pretty straightforward. Daily Scrum as the name implies, should be a meeting every day in which you decide what you're going to do f during that day. There's more to it, but that's basically it. Sprint review. Mm. Now this one is one that I'm a little bit cloudy on. I believe it's one where you essentially look at what you've done during the sprint, specifically the job, not how you've done it. That's the retrospective. That's the difference between review and retrospective, if I remember correctly. Review is, you look at what you've done, you maybe present it uh, to whoever gives a shit. Not specifically present it, perhaps, as in the presentation, but maybe let them muck around with it, something like that. And uh, retrospective is more like how you've done it. Were there any issues? Uh, do we need to do something differently because it's horribly disastrous? Probably not, because nobody actually wants to speak up. M moving on. <laughs> Product backlog is the list of things that you can do for the application you're working on. Spring backlog is 
set of things that you have decided to work on during the sprint planning. An increment is either the actual thing that you achieve during the sprint or it's intended to be. I don't know which one, maybe it's both under the same name. All right, so now that we're here in a specific event, we should decide if we're gonna do it. <laughs> Does it make sense? And I say we, but really just me. Of course, you're free to offer your own opinion. Absolutely. I am no expert. I will just try my best. And I think this makes sense. The whole idea behind sprinting is that you want to mitigate risk. You don't want to do some kind of work for months upon months or even years, and then realize most of it was worthless, or nobody needs it anymore, or you didn't actually understand what the hell was going on. Maybe you made some terrible assumptions about the architecture, and if you went with it and created a whole application or something based around it, and it doesn't work, it's a disaster. Instead of doing that, a much better solution is to just work on a tiny little piece, not a tiny little piece of the whole project where you just pick any random thing, but something that you can actually use in practice. If you don't do the picking in practice, then all that you're going to end up is doing a massive application in parts, which you probably would have done already, so it's pointless. It won't actually help you at all. The critical aspect is to understand that whatever big ass crazy application you have, it's still probably made of a lot of tiny bits of functionality. Functionality isn't something someone else can come and use with your application. Now, to be fair, we don't actually have any risk to manage. What's the worst thing that happens if I screw this up? Oh, we have to continue using the shitty YouTube sub box. That's not exactly a huge risk. One of the main reasons I'm doing this series is because I'm not motivated enough to actually work on it randomly because it's that little of a problem. So in some sense, perhaps, you would say that there is no need to mitigate anything. But on the other hand, I'd like to point back to the last video where I did show off one random hacky application that I didn't actually finish. And I do feel like since it was just being done randomly and I did random things, I half asked some of it and it turned out to be completely useless. Like I don't use it now, right now at all, because it's missing some critical parts. While it may not be necessarily convincing that I need to sprint since who cares, but from my experience, which we will use, it would make sense to at least try. Now there's one issue that I need to address with the time boxing of the sprint. Rather than boxing my sprints in time, I will box my sprints in episodes. This is because the time box of the sprint is supposed to be a consistent amount of time. And for a team that's working normally in your everyday job, that would translate to basically 20 working days every sprint. In my case, as you can see with this series, I make no guarantees that I will make any videos in a month. I sincerely doubt that I would go a whole month without any videos, especially once we're done with this portion. But the key aspect to note here is that if I set it to a time frame such as a month or two weeks or whatever, I wouldn't actually have a consistent amount of work every sprint. So even if my actual sprint ends up taking, let's say, even over a month, it doesn't really matter, at least now. And I know that somewhere here it should say that you should never ever change the duration of a sprint. I think it's perfectly reasonable to suggest to change the duration of a sprint if such a change is not spurious and there's evidence to show that your sprint duration at that point is no longer suitable for one reason or another. It's only important that you change it for a good reason and that when you do change it, you keep it that way until another really good reason happens. Honestly, if there's really many good reasons to change a sprint length, maybe you need a different process. 
something else entirely. I heard Kanban's really good. I I don't know though, never tried. Sprint planning. Looks pretty straightforward, yes. Work to be performed in the sprint is planned at the sprint planning. I think it's pretty reasonable to suggest that since we're having sprints, we kind of need sprint planning. Because it would be really silly to do sprints without planning what to do for them. If luck will have it, next video we won't just write some stories, we'll also plan the first sprint, if you want to call it even that. <laughs> what was that supposed to mean? <laughs> I went through this video taking everything seriously, but now it's showing. It's showing my lack of seriousness. It's been, it's because the video has been going for too long. I'm sorry, guys. I can't hold it. I tried my hardest. I will try and prepare some place online where we can see the list of things that we're gonna do for this application. With some luck, those things will be stories, and then everything will make sense. Maybe we'll even have a goal. I must admit, I've never had a sprint goal through my one year of agile development. So this will be new ground for me. The way I imagine this going is basically, I will have reordered all the stories or tasks or what have you in the backlog and I'll pick something from the top ish to whatever I imagine I can accomplish. Then it will go horribly wrong, we'll learn from our mistakes and see what happens next. The Daily Scrum. For some reason they have really poured their heart out into this particular event. It's almost like they think this is like the most important event of them all or something. But look at this. They even have a full-on YouTube video that states that the daily scrum is not a status meeting. I agree, it's not a status meeting. Ironically, <laughs> we're more likely to have a status meeting than a daily scrum. Why? Well, it's obvious. I'm not working every day, so that doesn't really matter. We can stretch the definition of daily to include whatever we decide, of course. Uh, in this case, I could do it every video. That would be disastrously nonsensical. To begin with, I think it's not very important. Why? Because I'm working by myself, obviously, so there's really no coordination here. It's not like we're gonna get on each other's toes or anything like that. Any issues that would arise, I'll probably have to solve by myself, so once again, there's no real reason to bring them up anywhere. If anything, again, at the start of every video, I'll probably mention slightly where we're at, but uh, I don't think that the goal is going to be the same as the daily scrum, so when would we institute a daily scrum? If by some bizarre circumstance, someone else decides to work with me, we would still not have a daily scrum. Ha! <laughs> psyched you. It wouldn't make any sense. If I were to work with someone else, they probably would work in a completely different schedule from me. Once again, I work whenever I feel like, and the chances that whenever I feel like would align with someone else's working schedule are extremely slim. That being said, it's important to understand that these events aren't just here because someone wanted to have a random event. They have a goal to achieve, a problem to solve. I think this is probably what's written here, but I just cannot be asked to read it because of how ridiculously dry all of this has been written. If there wouldn't be one specific aspect of daily scrum that I would perhaps preserve, but not in an official event, it would be the decisions on the sprint backlog and what I'm going to work on next. That would probably be the main reason why this event exists. It's because even though you're working in, let's say, one month intervals, one month is still a lot of time. In that one month, you probably want to make sure that what you're doing makes sense, that the priorities are correct, 
that some arbitrary thing isn't getting in the way which would potentially ruin everything. These are very vague abstract concepts, but I think that's the idea and why this is so special if I may. While there should be absolutely a portion of it where you decide what you're going to do, the very fact that you decide what you're going to do implies that you could just go crazy with your decisions. Now they still have to make sense, but they could be crazy, which is the important aspect. At least that's what I think. I can definitely imagine a mindset in which that makes no sense, what I just explained, what I just said. You just wouldn't be able to understand the point of it. I think if you went into these meetings with such a mindset, it would be a complete waste of time. Utterly. I think that you're not going to change someone's mindset by forcing him to go to a meeting like that. On the flip side, if you do somehow change one's mindset, these meetings would just happen naturally. It would be just the most efficient result of people who desire these and therefore work to get these to happen. Perhaps not in the exact same form, but nevertheless, the goal of these meetings would be achieved. And I think one key aspect to notice here, which is perhaps overlooked when discussing such a matter, is how likely is it that you're going to have to make crazy decisions about what you're doing in the sprint? Pretty slim. Especially if your sprints are really short, then there's practically no chance. In my case, there's practically zero chance. And I feel confident that if I do see something like that coming up, since I'm the only person working here, I'm not going to have to manage it with anyone. So there's no real meaning to having a specific meeting such as this. So we shall say no to the daily scrum. Sprint review. I don't even remember exactly what I said sprint review was because it actually was quite a while ago and I was just talking completely out of my ass. Uh, was it, I said, uh, it's about reviewing what was done, which is close enough, I guess, based on what I see here. It's a little bit different though. This one in particular is very odd. Why would this be here and not in retrospective? We shall see. Now I'm intrigued to see what is retrospective if you already discussed what went well and what problems were. So what are you going to do to retrospective? Ah, just drink some Coca-Cola. Right, so in general it seems to be this. You go through the things that have been done and things that haven't been done. You talk about it. You hold a demonstration of sorts. And then you review what is the next best action in terms of the product backlog. In other words, what makes the most sense as the next thing to do? Hmm, interesting. In our case, I probably should go through the things that I've done. After all, some people have expressed interest in this application, so it makes sense that perhaps they will not be all that interested in watching every single video of me just coding or even running the application occasionally and uh, there's no guarantee that that will be a complete description of what was done during the sprint. So I think it makes sense to go through the items that have been done and haven't been done for that matter. We'll see about the discussion after I see what the hell retrospective is then. Now the demonstration part in particular... Mm, right, so my experience with demonstration is that if you just show something to people, they're just gonna stare blankly at it and that's gonna be it. To be fair, I'm not the one doing the presentations most of the time. Maybe I have some skill and I could make that work better. And the people in the comments can be actually pretty verbose as well. So maybe there is point to it. Let's do it. Let's do it and see what happens. If I do a demonstration and it's boring as shit and nobody comments on it, even if they view it, then we're probably gonna stop doing it. Yeah. It'll tie in nicely with the whole done thing. I'm in a unique position of being both the development team and the product owner at the same time, so I can just combine those, maybe. 
That's probably a terrible idea. I think that makes no sense. Actually, what the, the whole done thing I think here is supposed to be more like a list, especially also what has not been done. But the demonstration really is supposed to be the way I understand it in the perfect scenario is some random people trying out your application. They sit down, maybe they have some help from a developer. If they get lost, you know, in the menus or whatever, and uh, you have someone else behind them just watching with one eye massively focused on everything and writing down everything that happens. What the fuck am I talking about? This is the 21st century. They bust out the camera and they record the whole thing. <laughs> Jesus. This is a YouTube video in which I unironically suggested that you write down something in the situation in which recording something. Do you even understand how ridiculous that is? What the fuck? I don't even know what's going on anymore. But anyway, in our case, we can't have that because, first of all, I'm all by myself. Second of all, no one's gonna come and try this application. Well, that's not true, perhaps. I may have some connections to some people who could perhaps try it out. I'm looking at you, Aniki. <clears throat> um, I'm just perhaps. It... I'm not sure if it's likely that they would be actually interested or even record the whole thing, which would be helpful. But we'll see. We'll see. This is only the beginning. And as I said, I've decided to try and see what happens. I think it's important to understand, of course, that even if I do make the best presentation in the world, even if there's a hundred thousand comments each of which with more and more suggestions and opinions about the thing. It doesn't matter. Okay, well, if it's a hundred thousand, then it's fine. But if it's nothing like crazy, that still doesn't mean that I will look at the demonstration and think, yeah, this is useful. I could think of better ways to accomplish it, perhaps. Now, regarding discussing the product backlog, I'm 50-50 on it. I'm not sure how much time and effort should be spent at that point to discuss the product backlog. Probably not too much, because you'll have a sprint planning next, soon-ish, so maybe it depends on who's attending the meeting, things like that. It It's a very corporate discussion, and in our case, that is not very applicable, which is why I'm 50-50 on it. We're not going to have... The way I see it, anyone here that matters besides me. I'm the one calling the shots. You can give me suggestions, but you can't make me do it. I mean, I will consider every suggestion, of course. So, maybe there will be meaning in it, but here's the issue. The keyboard being discusses. How would we facilitate this discussion? Got it. Through comments, it makes perfect sense. It's not that we're going to discuss it in a video, like for example, demonstration I could show in a video, but the discussion has to be in the comments. So if there's someone writing comments, and I'm replying to them, we're having the discussion, problem solved. Sprint retrospective. Well, look at that. What worked well? What could be... Isn't that exactly the same thing that we just supposedly did in the sprint review? Yeah, what well in the sprint, what could be improved? Well, what we will commit to improve, that's new, but the other two... Ah, I see, there is another important aspect, the definition of done could be adapted. In the, in the review, you only speak about the sprint, though you still could say that if, if there is a problem with definition of done, it probably arises during the sprint. But maybe this could also include external factors, as it says, maybe changing standards. Something changed in the standards, which has nothing to do with the sprint, and now you have to discuss it. In our case, I think this event would be completely and utterly pointless. Why is that? Because once again, I am working by myself, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm gonna be spending time in between working, you know, just randomly living, existing, 
traversing the space-time, as I usually do, and thinking at the same time about what's going on, what I've done, all these things. Which means there's really no point in putting them in some kind of special event. If at some point I realize this is stupid and I need to change it, I'll just do it right there and then. And if I'm not sure, I'll probably still just decide, well, we're going to try something. And I don't see any point in waiting until the end of the sprint for it. There could be some meaning to, to it for relatively minor things and to not be disruptive about it. But in my case, like, my sprint already is just whatever. For all intents and purposes, it's just me randomly working at random days for a random amount of time. And also, there's no one else out there that can actually contribute to this event. Perhaps someone else would want to say, What you're doing is stupid, and you need to change it. Well, guess what? Every single video has a comment box under it. You can just write it down right there, right now. In my case, every event would be like a special video. So... There's no meaning in having a special video dedicated to that. You see something stupid, write it down. You see something stupid somewhere else, write it down anyway. I don't care. It's not like I have a lot of comments anyway. Maybe you'll make my day with some funny happening that happened to you. Who knows? But if I was working in a team, there would definitely be a point to having such a meeting. Of course, the issue is people have to be willing to actually... <laughs> look critically at what's going on and try to make the best of it. If they're kind of just stuck in the status quo, nobody's going to talk, nobody's going to say anything, then this meaning will also be utterly pointless because no one will write anything of substance and nothing will ever be improved. You also need to have a kind of bravery to try things. For example, I don't want to do a demo, I'll be honest. I think it's going to suck, I think it's going to be a disaster, I think it's not going to achieve anything. But I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try to confirm that I'm not wrong, that my past experiences are wrong, that people that I'm working with are different. And it's important. It's important to confirm such things. If you don't have that bravery, then once again, this meeting will be completely useless, because all it will be, it will be just a list of complaints that no one looks at. Oh, this could be improved. Well, too fucking bad, because nobody's going to do anything about it. Oh, well. <laughs> Guess we wait until the next week so I can write it down again. Well, it's not week, it's next sprint, what I meant. So yeah, we're definitely not having this. I see no point at the moment. And if I ever do see a point, I'll just change it. That's the whole point. So all that's left is the artifacts, and this is pretty straightforward. I'm not sure why is this like this. The reason I have a problem with this picture is because it shows that Things in earlier sprints, as implied by 1, 2, and 3, and 4, you would guess that this, these are tasks for the first sprint. Yet for some reason, the biggest requirements, which would make them the most elaborate, are the ones for sprint 4. It's basically saying, well, just don't bother with those important, massive things. Just do the small stuff first. It's a terrible graphic. You should you should replace this backwards. You should the the closer this this bleh, the closer the task is to being taken, the closer to its complete description it should be. How close it should be? Well, that's a matter of opinion, but the proportionality of how close it is, if at all different, should be inverse to what we see in this picture. At least that's what I think. We'll think about this and the sprint backlog, which is basically just the sprint. It's, it's just, it's the same thing, except it has columns to display progress. We have then the increment. The other two, I will probably look into some website to do this. Otherwise, we'll do it on something stupid like Google Sheets. Let's, let's hope there's... I, I've never actually looked if 
something like Jira is available for free. I know Bitbucket is available for free and it's from the same company. So if Jira is available for free, I may make use of that. Though I'm not sure that I will have the possibility to allow people to do anything in it outside of myself and a couple of other people. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. So an increment is some of all the items completed during a stream. Some of all the items completed during a sprint, and the value of the increments of all previous sprints. So yeah, it's basically just stating things that you've done at the end have to be usable. So you're not just doing random stuff, you're actually working towards a goal that once complete, you will be able to use it. And I think this will definitely apply to us. Absolutely. I wouldn't dare so much as do a sprint without at least trying to make something working out of it. What will that working out of it be? Oh dear, it could be anything. Now there's a lot of mentions of definition of done and what that really means. One important aspect is that everyone understands what done means. Unfortunately, nobody understands what everyone means because nobody actually specifies what the everyone is. Does that include a random hobo standing outside at a corner of the street right now? I'm not actually looking through a window, I'm just pointing at it for some reason. For the sake of sanity, I will assume that everyone actually just means me and anyone else who gives a shit. So if you give a shit, I'll just write it down somewhere. Maybe in the comments? Maybe somewhere else? I don't know. In the description? That's unlikely. It will probably be too wordy for a description. Alright, so I think we have done all the we can really do. We've decided on a process. Hopefully soon we can put this to the test. All right, finally we can start with the rambling part. So for this video I set out to do one very specific thing and that was try and make the initial part make more sense. Like the last time I started in the middle of this screen. That looks completely weird, I assume, for some people. Now, I did ramble on quite a bit on every single one of these points, but I think, unlike in the previous episodes, I have tried to at least keep to the topic at hand, and hopefully I don't repeat myself or edit out anything that is not important. It has been quite a daunting task to make this video because in this video I go over a process that honestly I can't say that I've actually tried and practice. I've tried something similar to it but not quite like it, not quite agile enough. I have uh, tried it at work basically and there it came somewhat as a corporate policy, you know. The business decided, well, we need some agility. You know, you need some of that agility, man. We're just not agile enough. So that's what was decided, and to some extent Scrum was mandated as well, though I've heard uh, or seen different accounts of how strongly it was forced. I don't know, but the fact is we've been doing it for like a year, and uh, it's not going very well put it this way. Most people are just very passive. They don't really talk. I am one of the most active people in the meetings. And you have to understand something that you may not understand, but I am pretty fucking shy. Again, even just making this video took me a long time because it's really hard for me to just sit down and express my opinion. I just get lost in the sea of thoughts about what people would say as a counter and then what I would counter back and so on and so forth. It just explodes and it puts me in this weird, almost catatonic state where I don't even feel like doing it. I need to really push myself to get out of it and get a video like this done. and. That's the same really in everything I do in real life. Even my Let's Play videos were indifferent. The only difference is that I've been doing them for fucking five years or six years now. But when I started the first video I released, I thought, oh my fucking god. What are people gonna say? 
I put so much grain on that filter. Won't they think it's fucking retarded? <laughs> Things like that. At some point, I just say, well, fuck it. Let them think it's retarded. Let them comment. Come at me. And that's why eventually I do end up making something at all. This is no different. It's just like, yeah, I'm making this video and it's really crazy that I'm actually making this video. It's really crazy that I made a video in which I express so much opinion about something that's pretty opinion driven in this case. But yeah, the main thing that I wanted to mention was that I do do something like this at work. It's not quite like this. It's not quite agile enough. And I just can never find the strength to really strongly decry something. This is because I don't have any experience. I had never done agile before we started and doing it in, at this work. And as a result, any opinion I may or may not have is not necessarily steeped in practical results. It's kind of anecdotal. If I see that something is causing some issues or something not working, I can point that out, but I don't necessarily understand what exactly is the issue, what exactly is the problem. So it's really hard for me to counter and say, well, well, that's what the scrum says to do. They wouldn't say to do not do it if it wasn't a good idea. And I know that is really silly, but you need more to convince people than just stating that something is silly. There needs to be a really some evidence or some logical series of steps, which I have found really hard to pinpoint. Of course, it doesn't help that many of these processes, as I've shown even in the video, really are written in the kind of marketing speak, where they really aren't even trying to justify themselves. Why would they? Most of them are just pretty much sold to companies as the Kool-Aid. It's going to make things work so great. But of course, that's not how any of this works. And I thought one way to, to solve this, obviously, is to gain more experience. And I don't particularly want to leave my job just to resolve this particular argument. I'm actually pretty satisfied in my job uh, that I have right now. So the only other option is to gain such experience like this, doing random stuff. And I think the insight that I would potentially gain from doing it this way, basically taking the process and actually adapting it to my position the way I want to, will probably give me some insight. And the conditions are sufficiently different wherein if I see, you know, that something works or doesn't work, I can start actually perhaps understanding more core principles, the ideas that build upon this framework and how to actually make it work for a given set of people and set of working conditions. So ultimately, this will probably be quite helpful to me, even if the sub-box ends up a complete disaster. Just another little bonus. As you can see, I didn't discuss any of the roles in the episode. This is because I will be taking all of them. And as a result, there's no real meaning in stating which ones I'm going to be or not. I mean, I'm, I'll just do whatever I need to do. <laughs> for the appropriate meanings, events to make sense. Overall, I don't have any strong feelings about them too much. I think they're also really simple, kind of like the artifacts, which we also haven't listed out here, because they're just, they're just specific roles to accomplish specific things. So I probably wouldn't even have had much to say, other than read what the page in Scrum webpage says about them. It's not that I don't have anything to mention, I just don't think that uh, it's as important as the other things, and it already probably took a lot of time, especially when you include this rambling bit at the end. And the last thing I want to address before I leave is that in the last video we had an extremely shitty quality. This was due to me mucking around with video settings and not checking the end result due to just being extremely exhausted, spending as much time resting after a long uh, week of work. 
the deadlines they had approached, etc., etc. So that will probably not happen. I will stop trying to save space with uh, these settings. Just use high quality settings for uh, rendering and. Uh, I'll use the same ones I use for Baldur's Gate, which if they were for Baldur's Gate, there's a good chance they will also work very well for this. A lot of this is just empty screen. Hello. I'm pretty confident in saying that it'll probably be fine going forward. It'll just take up more space in my hard drive. I can compress it later on using some other algorithms if it becomes necessary. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, next video, we will probably write some stories, tasks, or whatever. Set up, uh, you know, a web page for that shit. And if we have the time, we'll set up uh, sprint planning and decide on the length of the first sprint. Things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that, we are done for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.